This is 5 on your side at 10. A terrible day in our community. A St. Louis Public High School, now the site of the latest school shooting. Students sent running, some jumping to safety from third floor windows. Police rushed in in a matter of minutes. Tonight, a student and a teacher are dead, others injured. Lives forever changed. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. A mass shooting at a school in St. Louis, leaving three dead and seven hurt after a gunman opened fire at Central Visual Performing Arts High School. Our team coverage tonight will bring you everything we're learning from information from authorities to firsthand accounts from victims and witnesses. We start with a minute by minute breakdown of when the shooting happened and how quickly police responded. The school day ambushed with violence. The intruder said, get ready to die, and they shot one of the students and the teacher, and the rest of the students uh, jumped out the window. It was, it was on the third story. 9-11 a.m., the 911 call came in for an active shooter at Central Visual Performing Arts High School. Police say 19-year-old Orlando Harris, who graduated from the school last year, somehow got into the locked school armed with a long gun and a dozen 30-round high-capacity magazines. As shots rang out, staff tried to barricade doors and panicked students called their parents. Then she was like, Mom, Mom, they on the floor, he on the floor, he's shooting on the floor, whatever. And I'm like, don't say nothing, don't make a sound, like, just be quiet or whatever, and just pray. 14 minutes after the call came in, police had taken down the shooter. In that short time, Harris killed 61-year-old health teacher Jean Kuska and 15-year-old Alexandria Bell. But police fear the death toll could have been much higher if not for the officer's incredibly quick response. The call went out, they drove there, they put the car in park, they, they drew a weapon, they went into the building. There was no sidewalk con you know, conference, there was no discussion, there was no, hey, where are you going to, they just went right in. After the all clear, students were evacuated and parents rushed to reunite with their children. And the worst part is the unknown of not knowing where your child is. 700 children whose lives were at risk, lucky enough to make it home. But for two families, life will never be the same. A teacher and a student gone forever. Police say they believe the shooter was suffering from mental illness. Harris had no criminal history. Police refused to explain how he got into the school. The chief says he doesn't want to give a potential shooter any ideas. Just a few hours ago, our Robert Townsend spoke with the father of a young girl killed today. Robert continues our team coverage live outside the high school with the emotional interview you will only see here tonight. Robert. Mike Andre Bale calls this the worst day of his life. He still cannot believe his daughter was shot and killed here at a high school. It's a nightmare. Tears streamed down Andre Bell's face when he got the heartbreaking telephone call Monday morning. His daughter, 15-year-old Alexandria Bell, had been shot and killed in her classroom at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School in South St. Louis. Dad lives in Los Angeles. Her mother called me, and that's how I found out. She was everything to me. Joyful. Wonderful. Great person. Alexandria was a 10th grader at Central VPA. Her dad says she had an outgoing personality, loved to dance, and was a member of her high school's junior varsity dance team. She was the little girl that I love to see, that I love to hear from. No matter how I felt, I can talk to her, and it was, it was all right. That was my baby. Alexandria's health teacher, 61-year-old Jean Kushka, was also killed in the shooting. The beloved teacher worked for the school district for 20 years. She reportedly lost her life trying to protect her students. I need somebody to make this make sense. That from a grieving dad who has many questions about the deadly shooting that took his daughter's life one month before Alex's 16th birthday. Right now, I just, I'm just trying to find some answers. I want to know how he got in. Now, Bill just talked to his daughter yesterday afternoon. He will now fly here to St. Louis in a couple of days and help prepare Alex's funeral. Live in South City, Robert Townsend, five of your side. 
Well, a terrifying day for students and teachers alike. One teacher was worried about his students and his son. While he was shot at, his son was hit with gunfire. Christine Byer spoke with him just a couple of hours ago, and she joins us live. Christine. That's right, and Manfred McGee is the Dean of Art at Center for Visual and Performing Arts High School, and he spoke to us just 20 minutes after his son got out of surgery. I stepped into the hallway to find out, you know, a little bit more about what was going on. And at that moment, uh, the shooter was in the hallway and fired uh, a shot at myself uh, and another uh, co-worker. Manfred says he ran to a bathroom to hide and all he could think about was his 16-year-old son, Anthony. When I came out of where I was in my secure location, I intercepted my son, who, uh, who I was informed had been shot. He says he saw blood and a hole in the back of his son's pant leg. They were in uh, the classroom. The classroom was locked. Uh, her our policy and that the shooter shot the uh, some glass on the door and reached in and unlocked the door and came in the room and started firing rounds in the room is so that's where he was shot. Manfred says he knew the shooter Orlando Harris when Harris was a student there. He was a somewhat quiet student. Um, kind of like a gamer, you know, he was into video games. When Manfred saw his son, he says he wanted to stop the bleeding. I took off my belt to tie it around his leg to kind of stop uh, the, some of the bleeding uh, before we took him out of the building. He says he worked with teacher Jean Kushka for more than 13 years. I actually had just saw her uh, this morning when she got to work. A um, uh, wonderful soul, wonderful person. Now, I asked Mr. McGee, why would you speak to us just 20 minutes after your son got out of surgery? And he said he thought it was important that the community know that this did not go down like other shootings throughout the world. He said that first responders and St. Louis public schools were on top of it. Live outside of Barn Jewish Hospital, Christine Byers, five on your side. Our community in mourning, hundreds gathering for a vigil in Tower Grove Park tonight, honoring the teacher and the student they lost and demanding change. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski is live from outside the school. And Laura, you spoke with a student who was in the classroom as the gunman shot his way in. And the student I spoke with says that one minute she was sitting in health class and the next she was huddled in the corner with other students as her teacher, Miss Kushka, jumped in front of them. Once the eagle, always the eagle. Alex Macias says it was a pretty average Monday morning until the assistant principal of Central Visual and Performing Arts High School came over the intercom with a signal they only hear during active shooter drills. People thought I was being overly dramatic. And then we heard gunshots and everyone scattered to like get on top of us. Alex says her health teacher, Mrs. Jean Kushka, locked the door, but it wasn't enough. So he was able to just shoot like he was able to shoot his way in. That's when she says the shooter fired shots at the group of them. He did shoot Miss Kushka. Um, and after, like I just closed my eyes. I didn't really want to see anything else. But then as I thought he was leaving, I opened my eyes to see him standing there making eye contact with me. And then after he made eye contact, he just left. And then everyone in the room but me and my friends started jumping out the windows. I debated it, but I was too scared that I might die that way or break a leg. She wasn't alone. Brianna Love was in another classroom wondering if she was next. We were all huddled in this corner, sobbing over each other, hugging each other, holding each other's hands, praying, hoping, not knowing what was going to happen, completely helpless. We couldn't do anything. I didn't have my phone on me. My phone was in my bag. I thought to myself, I, I was really going to die in that classroom without being able to text my mother that I love her. Are you going to feel safe at school anymore? I only believe I'll feel safe if they like up the security measures. I feel like they definitely are going to need more security at the school if they want us to come back. And as they come together after this tragedy at a vigil in Tower Grove Park, they demand change, but first they grieve.
So many lives were changed by this horrific tragedy, and Alex says she will never forget what her teacher did for her today. Reporting live in St. Louis, Laura Barcheski, Five on Your Side. This is just so unfair. It's so unfair. Elected officials join the outcry to condemn school shootings and to connect grieving families with resources at that vigil tonight. Our political editor Mark Maxwell was there and has reaction from politicians across the state. Mark. And Mike, as law enforcement still pieced together what happened, some public officials felt it was too early in the process to try and prescribe specific solutions tailored to this tragedy. But in times of grieving like this, our elected officials can also convey a composite of the public sentiment express pain and outrage and sometimes point our collective conscience toward a remedy. And I visited uh, this school on their first day of school. KSDK cameras rolled as Mayor Tashara Jones kicked off the new school year with students at Central Visual and Performing Arts with this on her mind. I just want to make sure that our babies are safe. They, they did talk about violence in the streets, uh, but they never thought that they would be experiencing that in their school. Nine weeks later, and St. Louis joins the long list of American cities mourning a school shooting. We have to stop the violence that is going on in our schools. Trudy Bush Valentine was one political candidate to join with mourners at the vigil and demand change. It never ends. Now it's happened in St. Louis. It should end here. Her Republican opponent in the race for the U.S. Senate, Eric Schmidt, tweeted, Our hearts are with the students and we commend the brave men and women of law enforcement. Governor Mike Parson tweeting, Our hearts go out to the victims and their families. One of those victims killed was 61-year-old teacher Jean Kushka. She was a, a great teacher. Kushka taught young Lakeisha Bosley years ago before she grew up and won a seat in the Missouri House. For her to be 61 and a step in front of a bullet for our scholars, you just heard it from one of the kids. No teacher should be a martyr. She chose life. She chose to save her children. She chose to save those scholars. She gave them another day. Now, Bosley says Missouri should do something to make it harder to get your hands on bullets. If you want to attack the gun, attack the ammo. Um, right now, it's easy to get ammunition in Missouri. Bush Valentine questioned why federal laws allow a 19-year-old access to a long gun in the first place. The federal law is that pistols cannot be sold to people under 21. Here we're selling long guns to 18 year olds. It's totally wrong. Several students and some mothers spoke at the vigil tonight and demanded action, calling for election, uh, elected officials to do something. Congresswoman Cori Bush, though, told the crowd, you don't have to wait on a politician to reach out to someone you might know, maybe in your own family or neighborhood, someone hurting and show them love and connect them to resources they need before they lash out in violence. The FBI is assisting St. Louis police in this case, and they're asking anyone who may have video or pictures that could help in the investigation to upload those to fbi.gov slash central VPA. While we're not on the air, our coverage continues online. Make sure you download the Five on Your Side app so you can get updates on the school shooting investigation sent straight to your phone. Still ahead. When he left the room, we start, we opened a window and we jumped out from the third floor. Students share their horrific encounters with the shooter. What happened in the moments of chaos? And coping with trauma. What you need to know when talking to kids after tragedies. Warm and gusty tonight. You'll need your rain gear. I'll time out when we'll see downpours and possible thunder. Tonight, the American Federation of Teachers Local 420 is demanding action after that man opened fire inside Central BPA High School. The union says they're going to do everything in their power to support their teachers and students. They want to make sure they are safe as they go back to school to teach and learn. Union spokesperson Byron Clemens says many students feel safer at school than they do at home, but now that sense of security has been taken from them. I would suggest that we want to look at the community with kindness, but also be inspired to do something about it. So these are the ills of the community that are coming into the school. I think most people recognize the St. Louis Public Schools have been safe from this, and now it's invading the schools as well, the violence in the community. The union president says he spoke with Superintendent Adams, who assured him 
that they would examine security at the school. Soon after the shooting, students who were inside the school opened up to Five on Your Side. We heard shots from behind the building, like they bust the windows out first from behind the building. And then they had shot our classroom door down. And a man opened the door, he was like, y'all finna die today. And he shot the teacher first, and when she, she fell to the floor, then another boy got shot in a hand, and he was bleeding. And two other girls got shot, and then when he left the room, we, start, we opened the window and we jumped out from the third floor. Now, many of those terrified students were eventually evacuated to another nearby school, Gateway STEM. Three schools converged at Gateway with, as you can imagine, some very worried parents and loved ones rushing to unite with their children. We caught up with some students who were not involved in the shooting, but explained how scary it was not knowing if their peers were affected. Three siblings who were all inside the school during the shooting were reunited with their grandfather. Happy to see him. I was so happy to get a text saying that they were all okay. So I knew they were okay, and I was just trying to get to them, and you know, caught in traffic, trying to get over to their school, and and then coming over here. So it was a great relief, and I'm so happy they're all safe. The grandchildren say they're not sure they will ever be able to set foot back in their school after seeing and experiencing all that happened today. Long after police clear the scene, the trauma from today will linger. Today, Five on Your Side spoke to Webster University professor and psychologist Dr. Jamika Cooper about having these conversations with loved ones. She says it's important to be empathetic with one another after tragedies like today's. Dr. Cooper adds, trauma has no timeline and everyone's healing process is different. And it's best to be open with all your reactions right now. Talk to them about how unusual this is. This is, this is not normal. And I think the more that it happens, sometimes people can be desensitized to it. Dr. Cooper adds it's important to remember this trauma is not an individual's weight to carry alone, but a whole community effort to come together. We do have resources scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Here are a few of them. Anyone affected by the shooting can call Congresswoman Cori Bush's office. That number is 314-955-9980. Behavioral health response is a crisis line and a youth connection helpline. If you or someone you know would like to talk to a clinician free of charge, please call 314-469-6644 or 314-819-8802. Since this morning, the FBI says they've received an uptick in additional allegations of potential school shooters in the area. During a press conference tonight, they stressed how important it is to talk to your children about how serious these situations are whether they think it's a joke or it's serious, we would just ask uh, everybody, you know, please help the area deal with this appropriately. Please have a conversation with your kid if they're old enough to have a device and make sure that any hoax or any joke that they're sending about school shooting right now will be taken incredibly seriously. Two other districts addressed potential threats today. Oakville High School dismissed students early after an anonymous threat, and that school will operate as normal tomorrow. And a scare at Rockwood South Middle School. Students were seen posing with weapons in different photos with texts saying they would, quote, shoot up your school. An investigation found the weapons were actually airsoft guns, and authorities say the students are not a threat. The principal released a statement to parents saying how important it is to talk to their children. Let's get your weather first forecast with meteorologist Jim Castillo and tracking the rain moving in, Jim. Yes, it is already here. Now, remember about a year ago tonight, uh, Scotty and I were tracking long track tornadoes, Kaufman and also St. Mary, Missouri to Chester. That one tornado was about 42 miles in length. Nothing like that tonight. Not expecting any tornadoes, but another very strong storm. And here's a cold front that's already pushing through. And I'll show you the other piece of energy that's going to heighten our uh, downpours and maybe some thunder overnight into tomorrow. But right now that rain's moving into St. Louis and and a little bit of embedded lines of, of a little heavier stuff. No lightning yet. And then we have this piece of energy here. There's a line of severe weather going through Texas. And then this spin here is an upper level low uh, that is also going to move in our direction. 
uh, mid and upper level and also enhance that rainfall for tomorrow and tomorrow evening. But right now you see a little bit of that golden yellow, so you might actually have downpours. Otherwise, a lot of this is light, but now pushing into the metro east and the metro. So it's raining out there and it's going to stay with us throughout the night and into tomorrow off and on into tomorrow night. And you can see a little bit of that yellow and orange popping up down through 44 through Rala. Here's that front coming through here tomorrow morning and then that other piece of energy low pressure that's actually going to track through the area and, and take all day to get through here tomorrow. So still kind of gusty as we head throughout the night tonight and into tomorrow that rain heavy at times. No severe weather is expected, but maybe some rumbles of thunder and look at these totals. These are the potential totals uh, from one to as much as three inches. It looks like the western portions of our viewing area seeing those high higher amounts. Uh, that's the way it's looking for now. It could shift a little bit to the east. 78 for that high today, 67 for the low. We'll probably be at about 67 tonight at midnight. So it's raining. So that zero that you had on the rainfall total is going up now. So we'll update that tomorrow. 70 right now, but at midnight, probably about 67. That'll be the high for tomorrow. And you can see why that chilly air is coming into Kansas City. It's 49 there, 60 Columbia, 70 here in St. Louis. So we'll eventually chill down to probably 59 degrees tomorrow afternoon at about 1 p.m. and then stay there all day. So that rain potential again heavy at times when you see the golds and the yellows and the reds. So we have a weather alert day for the downpours from time to time tomorrow. Drive carefully and then 62 Wednesday. We're clearing up as we head to the Halloween weekend. It looks like a chance of rain Saturday and a Sunday, but maybe for the trick or treaters. It dries out, which will be nice and highs on the Halloween in the 60s. All right, Jim, thanks. Stay with us. I am just very concerned and disappointed that this has not really been put to bed yet. Getting to the bottom of radioactive contamination at Jana Elementary. The push for answers in Florissant tonight after the Army Corps sampled the school today. Now to another important story involving a St. Louis area school. Today, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers went inside Jana Elementary School in Florissant to gather more samples. They are testing the soil and structures after that recent report found high levels of radioactive contamination in and around the school. Today, Five on Your Side spoke to Florissant's mayor, a former student of Jana. Timothy Lowry says he reached out to state and federal officials, and he's demanding answers. We want to make sure that uh, our community feels safe. We're definitely keeping in contact with who we feel is important to make sure that we get the help here and the assistance that we need here in the city of Florissant. The U.S. Army Corps says preliminary reports of these findings could be available within two weeks. In the meantime, parents are trying to find another school for all the students to be together. Dry and windy conditions led to a multi-agency firefight along I-44 across the highway from Lone Elk Park. Low humidity turns our forest to tinder boxes. One spark and a strong breeze carries fires long distances. That's what firefighters on scene think happened this morning, which isn't uncommon this time of year. Our fire season occurs mainly in the fall and then in the early spring. It took the power of St. Louis, Jefferson and Franklin County Fire Departments to control it. It was in a heavily wooded area. No buildings were threatened or damaged. When we come back, three key details to know in the school shooting investigation. We're learning more every hour about the horrific shooting inside Central VPA High School this morning. Tonight, here are three key facts we know. The initial call came in at 9-11 a.m. 14 minutes later, police shot the shooter. Three people died, a teacher, a student, and the shooter. Tonight, seven people are recovering in the hospital from either gunshot wounds or other injuries. Now, while we're not on the air, our coverage does continue online. That's 24-7. Make sure you download the Five on Your Side app so you can get updates in the school shooting investigation sent straight to your phone. And Jim has a final check of the forecast. 
Yeah, let's just uh, outline the next 24 hours because there's a big system coming through here. Now we haven't had a lot of rain. It's been so dry, as you know, and we've had brush fires and fire issues out there, but rain is going to be heavy at times. Some thunder too, no severe weather. But that said, we have a weather alert day tomorrow because of the ponding on the roadways, and this rain is with us right now. It's moving through St. Louis all the way back to Herman and Rolla. Let's zoom into the metro a little bit. It's already pushing into the metro east. Hasn't really reached our eastern Illinois counties yet, but still some rain and, and it's going to stay with us all the way through tonight into tomorrow and tomorrow evening off and on. And we can't even rule out some thunder in there too. So overnight lows again, midnight about 67 and then we drop to 60 by morning and then stay in the upper 50s tomorrow afternoon. It's gusty. Then tomorrow in the afternoon about 1 o'clock 59 degrees. We stay there all the way through the evening. So chilly jacket weather umbrella weather and we clear up as we head into Wednesday, but still a little bit gusty out there. So do be careful on the roadways tomorrow, guys. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Jimmy's guests tonight include Taylor Swift and Megan Trainer. Get the very latest today in St. Louis tomorrow, beginning at 4 a.m.